There have been many powerful warriors throughout the millennia. But ages of mortal combat have begun to tear the fabric of the realms. The critical point has finally been reached. It was foreseen that combatants would one day grow too powerful and too numerous. If left unchecked, their intensifying combat would weaken and shatter the realms and bring about the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> gods demanded a safeguard be put in place to avoid total destruction. One that would make use of the combatants' insatiable bloodlust. Like moths to flame, they would be drawn to battle. fire of blaze was extinguished. What appeared in its place brought elation to Scorpion's tormented soul. His ninja clan, the Shirai Ryu, had been fully resurrected. Numbering in the thousands, they covered the surface of the pyramid awaiting Scorpion's command. Among them was Scorpion's wife and son. Their reunion was to be short-lived. The sorcerer Quan Chi suddenly appeared among them. He grabbed Scorpion's young son and disappeared through a portal to the Netherrealm. 
Enraged, Scorpion ordered his clan to hunt down the sorcerer. He will not rest until his son has been recovered and Quan Chi is dead. The Dragon Medallion, having amplified the godlike power granted him by his victory over Blaze, Sub Zero was no longer a mere warrior, but an ice god. He was, however, a false god. He had become a deity without the consent of the Elder Gods, who sent their champions to hunt him down and destroy him. As the shockwave caused by Blaze's death rattled the surrounding crater, the pyramid on which Reptile stood began to crumble. A fissure opened to reveal a sarcophagus of familiar design. Reptile unlocked the curious artifact to find a female Zeteran. As she awoke, Reptile felt himself slowly reverting back to his humanoid form. The glory of Zatera will return once more. The half-brother of Taven and Dagon, Rain absorbed the power of Blaze and became a full god. I had not anticipated that the victor would be the son whose true identity I have hidden for so long. I bestowed the title of Protector of Edenia on Rain, but my pride in my son was misplaced. He uses his power to enslave Edenia, and now that I have ascended to Elder God status, I am forbidden to stop him. The energy of Blaze shattered Ermac, separating him into the many warriors who comprised his being. Now, each with his own physical form, the Ermacs are linked psychically and act according to their collective consciousness. No longer a mere fusion of warrior souls, Ermac has become an army. As the battle raged, Chameleon camouflaged himself and raced to the top of the pyramid unseen. There he defeated Blaze and the ethereal power overtook him. Immortality was now his. Though he had been ever-present throughout the crises of the realms, from Liu Kang's first victory to the return of the Dragon King, he had remained hidden from sight, waiting for his moment to come. That moment had arrived. From this day forth, the realms will know Chameleon as the true champion of mortal combat. With a flash, Blaze was defeated, and Noob Saibot found he was no longer standing atop the ancient pyramid, but in the center of a darkened arena. From the shadows, a figure slowly emerged. It was Sub-Zero, the warrior Noob had been before being slain by Scorpion. Sub-Zero had come to regain control of their divided soul. The two clashed, but neither could best the other. In the end, what emerged was a being that was neither Noob Saibot nor Sub-Zero, but something new. Smoke's power lies in his nanobot technology. Microscopic machines course through his veins, constantly repairing and altering his being. But when infused with the power of Blaze, his nanobots took on a life of their own. Multiplying at an exponential rate, they were soon numerous enough to consume Adenia, transforming the entire realm into a mass of sentient gray material that calls itself smoke. When he 
he defeated Blaze, elemental power surged through Cyrax and shattered his cybernetics. He was human once again. He allied with Sub-Zero, and with him confronted the cyborg Smoke and Sector. In an epic battle of men versus machines, Cyrax and Sub-Zero defeated their longtime foes. The cyborgs will be reprogrammed to serve the Lin Kuei once more, until they too can be reverted to their human forms. Upon defeating Blaze, the power that surged through Sector linked him with his fellow cybernetic ninjas, Smoke and Cyrax. Becoming one mind, they were joined in an abomination of flesh and technology. The realms will soon tremble at the coming transformation. All will bow to the new god. fire of Blaze burned away Stryker's previous notion of justice. The power coursing through his soul inspired him to fight injustice on his own terms. No longer would he allow himself to be confined by the law. He would strike evil from the shadows, a vigilante who would show no mercy to the corrupt. He went into seclusion to prepare for his one-man assault on the wicked. Soon all the realms will know the name. Striker. The heat of blaze wrapped itself around Cabal's hook swords and transformed them into fiery blades of vengeance. Crossing them above his head, Cabal challenged Movado atop the pyramid, seeking to end their rivalry once and for all. In an epic hook sword battle, Movado could not withstand the fury of Cabal and his enhanced weapons. Never one to admit defeat, Movado took his own life by performing Harakiri. Standing atop the pyramid, Cabal raised Movado's severed head high so all would know of the Black Dragon Clan's superiority. fire of blaze enveloped Dairu and formed around him a golden suit of armor. Enraged, Shao Kahn attacked, but the armor scorched his body with every blow. Dairu defeated the Emperor and claimed Outworld for himself. Under his rule, Outworld once again became the majestic realm it had been in ages past. Convinced of his good nature, Adenia and Earthrealm forged an alliance with Dairu that would ensure peace and stability forever. The power of Blaze drew Chi from all the combatants and funneled it into Jarek. He suddenly felt as if death itself were guiding his actions. Laughing maniacally, he sealed off the crater and unleashed a storm of fatalities upon his fellow warriors. None could escape the maelstrom of deadly energy. When at last the tempest abated, Sub-Zero's spine lay quivering next to Kano's still beating heart. An armless Jax knelt beside the two halves of Kung Lao's body. Jarek had finished them all. Upon defeating Blaze, the pyramid shrank and transformed into a golden ring. The ring granted Darius access to my vault, wherein lay the treasure rightfully due my sons Taven and Dagon. The powerful artifacts allowed Darius to finally defeat Hotaru and conquer the Realm of Order. But the items were meant only for my lineage to wield. I have now sent Taven and Dagon on yet another quest. They must work together to defeat Darius and retrieve what he has stolen. When the godlike power of Blaze flashed through Reiko's body, 
He felt his old desire for power return more intensely than ever before. Now more powerful than even Shao Kahn, Reiko defeated the Emperor and claimed his helmet. As he placed it on his head, his body fused with it, transforming him into a warlord of unprecedented savagery. As the energy of Blaze coursed through Fujin, it transformed the Wind God into a storm of justice. His power increased exponentially. He created a new realm from the shattered remnants of worlds that had fallen victim to Shao Kahn's aggression. From there, the forces of light will stage their operations with Kung Lao as Fujin's commanding general. Upon defeating Blaze, Boraicho was transported to the heavens. He stood before me, a humble warrior unsure of his fate in the presence of a god. I had looked into his soul and found that he was a good man and a powerful warrior. Outworld needed a protector, a task for which Boraicho had more than proven himself worthy. At my request, the Elder Gods breathed their life force into him transforming the once humble warrior into a god. Boraicho had become protector of Outworld. Movado felt the fire of Blaze awaken something within him. Focusing his mind, he found he could control anyone bearing the Red Dragon symbol. Telepathically guiding his clan in battle, Movado quickly subdued the special forces and the Black Dragon clan. He then tattooed their faces with the mark of the Red Dragon so they too would serve him. As his forces grew, Movado gained full control of Earthrealm. The power of Blaze transformed Hotaru into a being of pure order. All would bow before him or be transformed by his gaze. Yet there was one whom Hotaru would see pay for his crimes against conformity. The Cleric of Chaos, Havoc. The light of Hotaru poured into Havoc's mind and transformed him into an agent of order. Hotaru's second in command. Nightwolf received from Blaze carried him to the spirit world, an existence between realms from which shamanic power originates. He became a living ghost, the ultimate shaman. Nightwolf found his ally, Liu Kang, lost in the spirit energy and guided him back to the physical world. Nightwolf then reunited Liu Kang with his body. The fury of Blaze's destruction killed all those present at the final battle. Mocap was ripped apart, his soul cast into the Adenian sky. His name is taught in Adenian astronomy to this day. He is the constellation Mocap. Legends will forever tell of how the Earthrealm warrior saved Adenia from Armageddon. Johnny Cage defeated Blaze, and the power of the gods rushed through him. He gained superior strength and dexterity, but more important, a new insight into his existence. With the help of Shaolin masters, he renounced his superficial former life and became enlightened. For months, the Red Dragon had kept Kano hidden in their mountain stronghold, an unwilling test subject for a new process designed to transform humans into dragons. 
Kano escaped, however, before they could finish. Infused with godlike energy from Blaze, the process was rejuvenated. Kano was transformed into a black dragon human hybrid. When Jax absorbed the power of Blaze, the cybernetics in his arms grew and permeated his entire body. He was transformed into a full cyborg. He became aware of a controlling neural chip that had been implanted in his brain by Sector. Enraged, Jax defeated Sector and claimed leadership of the cyborg ninja clan, the Takunin. It is unknown if he will ever return to the special forces. Blaze opened Kai's mind, and he became psychically linked to the One Being. He could see the One Being's dreams, from which all of reality is formed. In deep meditation, Kai allowed his mind to wander the realms in search of knowledge. He witnessed the rise of Shao Kahn and his eventual demise at the hand of Liu Kang, the return of the Dragon King, and the final battle at the Pyramid. But when Kai looked to the future, he saw nothing. The fire of Blaze burned away the curse responsible for Kenshi's blindness. Not only was his sight restored, but he gained increased sensitivity in his other senses as well. As time went on, however, he found the sensory bombardment unbearable. Kenshi retreated to a remote mountain cavern where he remains isolated in a darkened, soundless chamber. The power of Blaze drew Chi from each of the combatants and fused it with Shujinko's soul. Though the battle was over, a new threat arose. One warrior now possessed the powers and abilities of them all. Shujinko went mad with power. After slaying all present, he embarked on a new quest. He would challenge the Elder Gods for control of the realms. In the shockwave of Blaze's violent death, Su Hao's corrupt soul descended into the Nether Realm. As his soul began to regain a physical body, Su Hao became his true self, a demon of emptiness and desolation. Leading an Oni horde, he defeated Shinnok and his minions. He now sits upon the throne of the Nether Realm. Because of his victory over Blaze, Cobra's strength was increased a thousandfold. Emboldened, he demanded the Elder Gods declare him Lord of the Realms. They assented, but added that no Lord should be without his Lady. Cobra chose Kira to rule at his side, and the Elder Gods transformed her into a Goddess of Death. With a kiss, Kira extinguished Cobra's life force and reduced his body to dust. Let all who would make demands of the Elder Gods beware. My world has been ripped to pieces. I awoke in a foreign realm, forced to complete a quest set forth by my parents, Argus and Delia. This quest, though intended to save the realms, has destroyed my family. My brother Dagon became obsessed with winning the ultimate prize of full godhood and murdered our parents. And in his madness, he sought to destroy me as well. Orin and Karo, dragons loyal to our family for ages, were not spared from the curse this quest has wrought. Dagon enslaved Karo to serve his own ends. The sorcerer Quan Chi killed Orin, who was my guardian. 
Though I had nothing left, I was determined to complete the quest. I faced many combatants, fighting my way to the top of the pyramid until at last I alone defeated Blaze in mortal combat. The energy released by his death passed through me, granting me full godhood. The excess power then filtered through my armor and passed into the other combatants. Though this energy was to have one of two effects on them, death or annulment of their powers, a third, unforeseen outcome resulted. The quest did nothing to resolve the instability of the realms. But as protector of Adenia, I vow to stave off Armageddon until a solution can be found. The power released by Blaze's destruction reunited Liu Kang's body and soul. Whole once more and possessing the power of a god, he confronted Raiden, who had been corrupted by his suicide. Liu Kang reluctantly defeated his mentor in an epic clash. With consent of the Elder Gods, he replaced Raiden as protector of Earthrealm. The power released by his victory over Blaze opened a portal and Kung Lao found himself in Earthrealm hundreds of years in the past. His ancestor allowed him to enter the Mortal Kombat tournament in his stead. Kung Lao defeated Goro and won the tournament, becoming a legend. As a result, Liu Kang never competed, and Kung Lao's rivalry with him never came to be. Empowered by the godlike energy he received from Blaze, Shang Tsung found that he could alter the forms of others. Enraged that he was denied the prize, Shao Kahn charged the sorcerer. With a gesture of his hand, Shang Tsung transformed his former master into a centaur slave. Shang Tsung had become the ruler of Outworld at last. Quan Chi's already powerful sorcery beyond his imaginings. The surge of energy was so great that it shattered his medallion. In his arrogance, Quan Chi ascended from Adenia to assault the heavens. There he confronted me with the Elder Gods at my side. The quest had been an elaborate trap designed to pinpoint the true source of disruption in the realms. As punishment, Quan Chi was transformed into a Kamidogu, the very medallion he had carried with him for so many years. The Elder Gods cast the magical item back in time, at the exact point where Shinnok had first discovered it. Shinnok had anticipated the elimination of all the combatants present at the final battle. He sent his doppelganger to aid Dagon in defeating Blaze. But with Dagon's unexplained disappearance, the false Shinnok defeated the Firespawn. The power of Blaze breathed life into him, making him as powerful as the real fallen Elder God. Shinnok must now face himself if he is to rule supreme. The Thunder God, Raiden, overpowered Blaze and absorbed the energy intended to transform the Sons of Argus. His strength enhanced beyond that of other gods, Raiden became a deity of unimaginable power. Releasing his fury upon the realms, he destroyed them all. None would threaten Earthrealm again. Wounded, Dagon followed Taven to the pyramid. As Taven battled Blaze, Dagon stabbed the fire elemental from behind with a sword I had left him. Thus through treachery did Dagon complete the quest. But before he could savor his victory, 
The pyramid shook, and a recess opened, revealing the parents he had murdered, Delia and myself. We were, in fact, still alive. Our deaths feigned in an elaborate test created to reveal the true nature of our sons. It is clear that Taven possesses the virtue required to defend Adenia. He will take my place as defender. Dagon, however, will be punished severely for the suffering he has caused. As reward for her victory, Blaze offered Sonya any power she desired. Glowing with energy, she turned and faced Kano, who had just reached the top of the pyramid. Her gaze burned into Kano. With a final scream of agony, Sonya's nemesis exploded in a cloud of ash. A mere glance, and her wish had been granted. Kano lived no more. With this new power, she incinerated the remaining members of the Black Dragon and Red Dragon clans, clearing the way for a new era of peace. Absorbing the power of Blaze, Katana attained a psychic connection with the Elder Gods and became their champion. To preserve the integrity of the realms, she formed an all-female fighting force whose members included Sindel, Jade, Sonya, and Li Mei. Together, they laid waste to the forces of darkness and trapped them in the Netherrealm forever. The power of Blaze united Melina and Katana. When the energy dissipated, Melina had become beautiful, but Katana was horrified to find her mouth filled with elongated, razor-sharp teeth. The change in her appearance allowed Melina to pose as Katana and finally take her rightful place on the throne of Adenia. She imprisoned Katana, who went mad in the palace dungeon. Defeated, Blaze transferred godlike power to Jade and instructed her to make true that which she most desired. As if controlled by some divine force, she let out a tremendous shriek that split open the pyramid. As she inhaled, the forces of darkness were sucked inside the ancient structure. It then resealed itself, trapping them there for eternity. Jade was celebrated as a hero and the pyramid stood as a reminder to those who would threaten Adenia. The power of Blaze purified Ashra completely. She was transformed into a being of divine light. Her radiance soothed even the darkest of souls. With new purpose, she traversed the realms in search of evil, pacifying the wicked. Her mission came full circle when at last she purified the sorcerer who would have her slain, Quan Chi. Filled with the energy of Blaze, Li Mei had but one purpose for her newfound power. In retribution for slaying her people, she banished the souls of Quan Chi and Shang Tsung to an obelisk. Trapped inside the relic, they must fend off wave after wave of aggressors for eternity. Justice has finally been done. transformed Tanya into a being known as a dragon caller. With a mere thought, she was able to summon dragon spirits from the ether into corporeal form. With an army of dragons at her command, she conquered the universe realm by realm. Soon Shao Kahn himself would call her master. Her strength increased, 
Frost once again took the Dragon Medallion from Sub-Zero and enhanced her freezing power far beyond her former mentors. Traveling to Outworld, she located the tomb of her ancestors, the Cryomancers, and planted their souls in the bodies of the current Lin Kuei. Her army of Cryomancers conquered the realms, leaving each of them a frozen wasteland. With the power of a god coursing through her, Sindel chose to undo the murder of her husband, Jared, at the hands of Shao Kahn. Reaching into the heavens, she pulled his soul back to Edenia and made him flesh once more. The reunited Jared, Sindel, and Katana formed the Triad of the Just to protect the realms from tyrants like Shao Kahn. The gift of godlike power transformed Natara into a blood god. Horrified, the combatants fled from the pyramid, but none were spared her wrath. Beginning with Shao Kahn, she mutated each of them into her vampire slaves. With the most powerful warriors in the universe at her command, Natara and her unstoppable army easily conquered the realms. Kira defeated Blaze and attained divine power. But in the battle, Cobra had been slain. Kira channeled her newfound energy into Cobra's body, slowly returning him to life. As Cobra regained consciousness, he reveled in the surge of godlike power and prevented Kira from severing their bond. Cobra devoured her life force and stole the prize, becoming immortal. He felt no shame in his betrayal. Kira was weak. She should have left him dead. That is the Black Dragon way. Blaze had dissipated, but the power he had released flowed into Serena. She lay unconscious atop the pyramid until Sub-Zero revived her. Examining her hands, she found that she had gained the ability to freeze. Serena confronted her old master, Quan Chi, and froze him solid. She and Sub-Zero hid the sorcerer in the Lin Kuei Temple, where he will remain forever suspended in a block of ice. victory over Blaze, Shiva was blinded by a flash of energy. When she regained her sight, she found herself standing before the Elder Gods. They were clearly alarmed that neither Taven nor Dagon had completed the quest. Their desire to prevent further turmoil prompted them to transform Shiva into a goddess of destruction. One by one, she laid waste to the realms using a powerful Kamidogu. When the realms reformed, nothing was as it had been. With the power of Blaze within him, Baraka would never again serve another. Summoning Shao Kahn and Onaga before him atop the pyramid, he gave them a choice. Submit to Lord Baraka or die. They responded by attacking the Tarkatan. In a flash, Baraka's blades grew to twice their normal length and pierced his former masters through their hearts. Flinging their bodies down the side of the pyramid, Baraka turned his attention to a more important matter. Who would be his queen? He gave Melina a choice. She chose wisely. Flames lashed at Motaro's body as Blaze released his energy. The searing pain consumed Motaro as he staggered about the top of the pyramid. 
When at last the fire dissipated, Motaro felt the familiar sensation of walking on four legs. He had undone the curse that had transformed his centaur race into minotaurs. With renewed purpose, Motaro vowed that the Shokan would pay dearly for their treachery. Infused with the power of Blaze, the Cleric of Chaos, Havoc, became Chaos Incarnate. His aura corrupted the stability of the realms, causing them to rip, tear, and reshape in grotesque ways. Soon, nothing remained that resembled the former universe. Havoc's dream had been realized. Ultimate Chaos had been achieved. The energy of Blaze unlocked the life force residing within Draman's mask. Unable to remove it, Draman became possessed by it and grew to three times his original size. The power of the mask also fueled the rage within him. Unable to contain his fury, Draman turned on his former ally, Moloch, in an epic battle of demons. Moloch was defeated, but Draman's bloodlust has only just begun. The Oni destroyer Moloch absorbed the gift of godlike power from Blaze and was transformed into a destroyer of worlds. In a gesture symbolic of his new power, he slammed his fist against the pyramid, completely shattering the structure. Moloch then laid waste to Adenia, transforming it into a barren wasteland not unlike the Netherrealm. Because he destroyed the Adenian portals, however, Moloch was trapped there, a victim of his own destructive rage. Meat was an experiment who escaped Shang Tsung's flesh pits before he could be completely formed. As the other combatants fought, Meat rushed unseen to the top of the pyramid and defeated Blaze. Godlike energy enveloped him, giving him the power to shapeshift. With the ability to become anyone, Meat lost his sense of identity and disappeared into obscurity. Blaze was no match for Shao Kahn the Conqueror. His strength increased tenfold. The forces of light could not fend off his final invasion as he merged each realm with Outworld. But his ultimate triumph was soon to be his downfall. With nothing left to conquer, Shao Kahn was driven to madness. Having defeated Blaze, Goro had attained the power of a god. But to the forces of darkness, this power was not meant for a mere Shokan to wield. Shang Tsung, Quan Chi, Shao Kahn, and Onaga all had anticipated victory, only to have it stolen from them. The four surrounded Goro in a vain attempt to wrest the power from him. Goro laughed, raised his arms, and let forth an ancient Shokan battle cry. From out of nowhere, an army of Shokan warriors stormed the pyramid and slaughtered the four attackers. The Shokan race will rule Outworld forever. Upon defeating Blaze, a thunderous voice offered Kentaro four magic swords. Each would be infused with the power of any warrior of his choosing. Kentaro resolved to give the weapons the powers of fire, ice, chaos, and order. As if wielded by invisible hands, each blade found its victim and slew him. The vanquished souls were transferred to the weapons, and there they will reside with the powers of Scorpion, Sub-Zero, 
have him, and Hotaru at his command. None will challenge Kentaro and live. Forces of darkness defeated Blaze, and the Dragon King seized the prize for himself, attaining ultimate power. He immediately focused his wrath upon the one being he despised most, Shao Kahn. Long ago, Shao Kahn had stolen Outworld from him. Now, Onaga would repay that treachery. Shao Kahn was beaten to the point of death, but Onaga would not see him die so quickly. He ordered Quan Chi and Shang Tsung to deal with the former emperor. While Onaga reclaimed his throne, Shao Kahn remained a captive in his own dungeon, tortured by those who had once pledged to him their allegiance. During his ages-long quest to monitor the realms, Blaze had been enslaved by Onaga's holy men and forced to guard the great dragon egg. The spell used to control him corrupted his original design. When his final objective atop the pyramid came to pass, he was unstoppable and defeated all who challenged him. As foreseen by the sorceress Delia, Armageddon began in the Adenian Crater and spread throughout the realms, shattering reality until there was nothing.